This is one of the most famous fairy or folk tales in Japan. It's called Hiroshima Taro and it goes back to the 8th century. So this is the story of Hiroshima Taro and this is how I will tell it to you. Long ago, in the ancient coastal town of Yokohama, there was a small simple house and in the small simple house there lived a simple family, a young fisherman and his elderly parents, mother and father, and they lived simple lives in their simple home. And every day, Hiroshima Taro the fisherman would go down to the beach and push his little boat, his simple boat, out into the water and he would go out and fish and he'd bring his catch home, he'd sell most of it and then take the rest of the catch and the money he'd earned back to the simple house that he lived in with his mother and his father and they would share a simple meal together. Well one day Hiroshima Taro went down to the beach towards his boat but as he walked towards his boat, he noticed down the other end of the beach there were children playing. Now when you watch children play, you can marvel at their innocence, their creativity, their imagination. But as Hiroshima Taro looked at the children playing, he did not see creativity, he did not see imagination, he did not see innocence. He saw the children had sticks in their hands and they were poking at something in the sand. He walked along the beach towards them and as he got closer he saw that they were poking a turtle, a live turtle that was awkwardly shuffling trying to avoid their sticks as they poked towards it. Hiroshima Taro chased the children away and told them to go to their homes ashamed and then gently he picked up the turtle and waded into the water until it was waist deep. He lowered it into the sea and then he let go. And as he watched the turtle swim away and go under the water, he thought he saw long streaming black hair, which may have just been a shadow from the turtle's shell. Well, Hiroshima Taro went back to his boat and pushed it into the sea. And when he was far enough out, he prepared his nets and his lines. But before he dropped them into the water, he noticed that swimming next to his boat, there was a turtle. There were two turtles, three turtles. There were turtles swimming all the way around his boat. He couldn't count how many of them there were. And then as he watched to his amazement, their hard shells transformed into soft, yielding bodies. Their beaked faces changed into beautiful faces of women. And long black hair streamed from every one of the sea women. One of the women pulled herself up onto the edge of his boat and looked at Hiroshima Taro and said, Hiroshima Taro, Hiroshima Taro, you saved me. I am the daughter of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea and you saved me. And my father, the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, would say thank you to you. So come with me. Come with me to the palace of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea. And Hiroshima Taro said, I'm a human. I'm a man. If I go under the water for any length of time, I will surely die. And the dragon princess of the Eastern Sea said, Bear but a touch of my hand upon yours, and you will swim with me. And Hiroshima Taro reached out his hand toward the dragon princess, and she grabbed his wrist and pulled him into the sea. And as he fell from his boat into the sea and went under the waves, he fought for breath. And as he fought for breath, he felt gills opening in his neck and found that he could breathe under the water like a creature of the deep. And he looked around and the dragon princess of the Eastern Sea was holding his hand and surrounding them were her ladies in waiting. And they swam down, down to the bottom of the sea where they came to the palace of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, a great structure of coral with beautiful gates of shimmering abalone shell, guarded by lobsters and other creatures of the deep. And as he watched, Hiroshima Taro saw every kind of creature of the sea swimming round, and yet there was no predator and there was no prey. Under the gaze of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, all could live together. 
and Hiroshima Taro was taken before the throne of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, and he bowed low. And the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea said, Hiroshima Taro, Hiroshima Taro, you saved my daughter. Let me thank you. You are a simple fisherman. You live in a simple home and live a simple life. But here you will be a prince of the Eastern Sea. You will live in your own suite of rooms. You will have people to serve you day and night. You will dine from fine plates and drink from fine goblets. You will have the best of food and the best of drink. This is your reward. And so Hiroshima Taro the simple fisherman became a prince in the palace of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea. And he lived in his own suite of rooms. And he had servants who would come to him night and day, whatever his wants. And he ate off fine plates and drank from fine goblets. And he ate and drank the best of food and drink. And in his suite of rooms, there were four windows. Out of one window, he could see Yokohama in the spring. Out of the other window, he could see Yokohama in the summer. Out of the third window, he could see Yokohama in the autumn. And out of the fourth window, he could see Yokohama in the winter. And so whenever he looked out of the windows, he had a reminder of his home and of the simple life that he had left. A simple life that had been replaced by the life of a prince. And he stayed there, living the life of a prince of the Eastern Sea for three years. But after three years, Hiroshima Taro realised that although he had servants who would come to him day and night, although he ate the best food, the best drink from the finest plates and the finest goblets, although he had a suite of rooms, he missed his mother and father. And so he went to the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea and he bowed to the Dragon King and he said, Your Majesty, I have lived as your guest for three years, but I miss my mother and my father. It is time for me to go home. And the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea said, If you must go home, then you must go home. But we extend our thanks to you once more, Hiroshima Taro. And so that you never forget the three years that you spent with us in the palace of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, I present you with this as a memento. And Hiroshima Taro took the black lacquered box from the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea and he bowed. And the princess of the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea took Hiroshima Taro by the hand once more. And she swam back up, up through the waters to the surface, surrounded by her ladies in waiting. And as Hiroshima Taro and the princess broke the, war broke the surface of the water, they breathed in the air, and Hiroshima Taro looked and saw there was his boat still bobbing in the sea. And he climbed into his boat and leant over to say goodbye to the princess of the Eastern Sea. And he said to her, thank you for everything. Thank you for three years. Thank you for this memento. And the princess said, Hiroshima Taro, you have our thanks. But remember one thing, Hiroshima Taro. Remember the box that my father gave you. Never open it. And with that, she swam under the water. And all her ladies-in-waiting followed her. And as Hiroshima Taro watched, his boat was surrounded by turtles. Hiroshima Taro looked towards land and he saw the pagoda, the pagoda of the big temple in Yokohama and he knew where home was and he turned his boat and he headed for home. He reached the beach and he walked up the beach clutching the black lacquered box so that he could show his mother and his father. He'd been away for three years and as he walked through the town he didn't recognize anybody. There must be new people in the city. He'd been away for three years and the town had got bigger and there were new buildings. In fact, it had got so much bigger that he got lost. He was walking to where he knew his family home was. He'd gone up the street, turned right, turned left, turned left. Turned... No, it wasn't there. He went back to his starting point and he tried again. He went up the street, turned right, turned left, turned left. No, it still wasn't there. He had one more go and he found the street on which 
he knew his parents' home was, and he walked along the street marvelling at all the new buildings there were in it, and he came to the plot where his parents' home should have been. But instead, there was an empty plot of land. Hiroshima Taro stopped a passer-by and said, Excuse me, sir, where is the house that was here? I have been away and, and I came to find the house that was here, but it's gone. And the passer-by looked at Hiroshima Taro and said, Oh, you must be new here. You don't know the story. Oh, no, no, there has not been a house on this land for a long time. There is a story. 300 years ago, a young man, a young fisherman, went out to sea and he was pulled under the waves by the sea people. His mother and his father waited for him and they waited with hearts broken until the day they died and when they died their house was demolished and no one has ever built here since. And Hiroshima Taro said, 300 years? But it was only three years. I am the fisherman. I am Hiroshima Taro. And the stranger backed away from him and said, You cannot be Hiroshima Toro. It was 300 years ago. And he ran. Hiroshima Toro looked at the black lacquer box that the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea had given him. And he walked back to the beach, through the town, not seeing the people as they passed him, not seeing the new buildings. He reached the beach and sat down on the sand and stared out to sea and thought about 300 years passing. He looked back at the box and remembering the words of the princess of the Eastern Sea, he put his fingers upon the lid and he opened the casket. And as he did so, The winds of north, south, east and west gathered in its interior and escaped and surrounded him and held him and embraced him and as the winds embraced him they carried with them three hundred years so that as Hiroshima Taro watched his young hands became middle-aged hands, his middle-aged hands became old hands and then he saw nothing for Hiroshima Taro was a skeleton on the sand. And then he was dust, carried away on the winds. And the only thing left of him was a black lacquer box. When I tell stories to children, they often ask me, is that story true? Well, I can't tell you whether the story of Hiroshima Taro is true or not, but I can tell you that in 1880, a British visitor to Yokohama wrote that there was a temple in the city that was dedicated to Hiroshima Taro. And in the temple, there were objects, there were artifacts, relics, and one of them was a black lacquer box, which of course, no one would dare to open. And that is the story of Hiroshima Taro, and that is how I have told it to you.